Okay, so uh, the final presentation for this evening, um, I'd like to introduce Denise Shaw, who is a Senior Innovation Advisor at EPA's Office of Research and Environment, and she'll be announcing the awards uh, or award winners for the Nutrient Sensor Challenge. Good afternoon, thank you, Kimberly. Um, I'm very pleased for the opportunity to share with you the announcement of the winners from the Nutrient Sensor Challenge. I'm here today on behalf of the Environmental Protection Agency and partners of the Challenging Nutrients Coalition. And I'd like to particularly recognize two of my wonderful colleagues who are here today, Abess Stauffer from the University of Louisiana at Lafayette and Mario Tambori from the Alliance of Coastal Technology. Um, we have been working on the Nutrient Sensor Challenge closely together for uh, several years now, and, and, and it's been a great experience, and I hope the results are gonna be helpful for everyone. As you guys know far better than I, the nutrient pollution is one of the nation's largest problems that we're trying to deal with on the environmental front. Um, many, more than 50% of the estuaries and coastal areas have, have uh, water quality impacts um, that can be moderate to high. Uh, economically, nutrient pollution has an astonishing impact, um, over $200 billion a year estimated uh, for the effects of nutrient pollution. And nutrient pollution has already ex also extends into drinking water, public health issues, and we've seen a uh, sharp uptake in the number of violations of nitrate in drinking water. So overall, it's a, it's a very, very difficult problem, and it's a problem that um, we have not made the serious uh, impacts on that we would have liked to over the past several decades. So in, uh, several years ago, the White House Office of Science Technology Policy convened a group of us from agencies and other organizations um, to meet to talk about what the issues were and why this was such an intractable problem. And we convened a group with a number of experts uh, from across the country and they um, uh, agreed that one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest limitations we have, one of the biggest barriers in our way is the lack of data at a sufficient spatial and temporal resolution. So we don't have enough information to provide uh, for decision makers and for researchers uh, to be making the kind of progress that we want to make. And so, whoops, let me back up one. Uh, we, we uh, number of agencies, a number of organizations shown here uh, the National Institute for Standard Technology, USGS, US EPA, the Alliance for Coastal Technology, NOAA, USDA, and IOS all uh, came together and worked uh, to plan for a challenge uh, that would help accelerate technology development of sensors for nitrogen and phosphorus and make them more affordable. Um, that, was one, that is one of the limitations that technology exists, that technology um, is being used, but for the vast majority of users, we heard, we asked, we learned that, the, techno that the, the cost of the capability was prohibitive. And so that was something that we needed to work on and we um, pulled our efforts together to launch the Nutrient Sensor Challenge. The Sensor Challenge was launched in 2014 and by the time registration had closed, we had 29 teams registered in 2015. These teams were developers and manufacturers who signed up to uh, go with us on this journey to try to see if we could uh, be successful in accelerating the development of lower cost sensors. We, once we had these teams in place, we had a number of activities to support them and to encourage them along the way, including a summit in, in Washington, D.C. we had uh, in 2015, where we provided some resources for capacity building and networking, um, which I think was very, very useful to the teams. Um, we also uh, offered um, at, the, at the Alliance for Coastal Technology an opportunity for what was termed no risk, no cost beta testing for the sensors, where they could be deployed at, at ACT at the Alliance for Coastal Technology, and they could be collecting data at the same time that uh, samples were drawn and analyzed and the results were provided back to them in order for them to figure out what kind of uh, adjustments, what kind of modifications they might make to their sensor, all um, at no risk to them. The information was, was confidential and provided to them, and the results were theirs alone. After the, some time went by after the um, no-cost 
uh, no risk, no cost beta testing, and we ended up with six teams representing nine different sensors that were selected for final verification testing in 2016. So we went from 29 teams to six teams and uh, down to nine sensors. These nine sensors were uh, evaluated, um, were verified at the Alliance for Coastal Technology in uh, extensive laboratory and field testing in fresh brackish and marine water uh, and for extended periods of time. It was quite a ri rigorous evaluation of the sensors and the results were then provided to an independent judging panel. And I am happy to have this opportunity with you today to talk of, to, uh, to announce uh, the results of the Nutrient Sensor Challenge. Again, this has been a multi-year project that has involved a number of agencies, a number of organizations, and um, we're very proud of all of the teams that participated, and um, we hope that it's been useful to all of them. But in particular, I hope you will join me to, um, to, uh, to announce the, um, the honorable mention for innovation and potential to uh, Max Grand at National Oceanography Center in Southampton. Oh, thank you. If you'll come up, Max, please. Thank you very much. Very nice work. Thank you. Oh, yes. Excuse us. Sorry, what do I? Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a grand, there we go, uh, for best overall performance for both nitrogen and phosphorus, the winner of the Nutrient Sensor Challenge is Sistea. And I would like to invite Pompeo Mochetta down uh, up to the stage. And I hope you will join me in congratulating. Um. And before, before we, I finish up, I would just like to um, let you know about, about the continuation of the Nutrient Sensor Challenge based on the success and the experiences that we had with uh, teams and folks we've heard from, um, from, from, from other organizations, and also based on the interest from users. Um, we have made the decision and have the opportunity to continue on to a third phase, Nutrient Sensors in Action uh, Challenge that will accelerate not only the technology, but moving on to accelerating the deployment and use of these sensors. Um, it's not just enough to have the sensors. We really want to encourage uh, great examples of the sensors being deployed, the sensors being used in decision making. This is going to be a two-stage challenge. The first phase of the challenge is going to be um, asking uh, users asking folks who are involved in nutrient monitoring uh, to provide plans that describe their intention and, and some of the details about the deployment. A number of those will be selected to go on to phase two, which is about deployment and demonstrations. And winners will be identified from that, and we have um, up to 150,000 in prize money that will be uh, shared um, among, among the winners. And it will be open and eligible to, uh, to host teams, organizations that, um, uh, that are doing, currently involved in, in sensor, uh, nutrient sensor monitor, nutrient monitoring and, and would be able to, uh, to take advantage of this. And they will team with some of the developers and we expect it to launch in uh, March of next month. And um, uh, just before I wrap up, just if you're interested in more information about the nutrient sensor challenge, and um, more information about the Alliance for Coastal Technology, if you want to have access to the reports. Um, the, these are two of the two websites, and also this is where you'll find more information about the launch of the, of the Nutrient Sensor in Action Challenge. So thank you all very much, and congratulations again to Max and Pompeo. I'm sure you guys are all really excited to go outside now. <laughs>
Sounds wonderful out there. Um, thank you very much for coming uh, to hear the award presentation for today. And uh, just a reminder, we have the Hutchinson and Redfield presentations tomorrow evening. Thank you very much.